So yeah, I wanted to put together a um, quick tutorial on MacSurf stability to show you how you can use the uh, software to put in the various different load cases or just generally upright sort of hydrostatics data. So you can see how your boat will perform um, both stability wise and also how it will perform when you start adding the different weights into the boat itself and it will calculate the overall center of gravity and the, the various lists and trim angles as well as you can do a series of other types of functions to give you general data so different uh, drafts, different displacements uh, and overall it gives you a much better understanding uh, theoretically of how your boat will perform um, for a given set of conditions. So with that in mind, I'm going to jump straight into a tutorial and I'll show you how we can use the software in a different ways to give us some different data and different analyses. So the first thing I'm going to do before I start is I'm going to check that we're in the right type of analysis. So I'm going to check that we're doing our upright hydrostatics. If it's not, we just use the drop down and change it to up upright hydrostatics. And then we'll open our design. I'm going to use the rounded design, uh, the rounded hull uh, from the four that we have available. The section calculation options are usually pretty much set for us, so we just click OK and I'm going to zoom in. Um, I can put on a water line so I can show where the water line is for the given design. Uh, we need to make sure that we rec recognize where the zero point is and the aft perpendicular. We can have a look um, at our section view and also our plan view as well. So we're very similar to our modeler and we also have our perspective view that we can render um, the hull shape into and it will also show you the actual waterline. So you can actually see the boat's waterline uh, where it is. So we'll head back to our profile view And we're going to, for our first set of values, we're going to do our displacement range. And I'm going to do start at zero um, and go to a final displacement of 10 kilos with a number of displacements of 10 between that. And you'll see that we'll get this uh, chart table. If we click start the analysis, it will run the analysis um, at the different uh, displacements, ignoring your given waterline or your DWL, it'll ignore that and create a set of new DWLs for the dis the draft uh, the displacements, um, and you can see various different values there. If the units are coming out in a bit of a funny uh, sort of using kilometers or whatever, you can change the units in the un usual way. So that's how we're going to do check our uh, values of our center of gravity, center of buoyancy, center of flotations. Uh, we'll look at those again in, the, in a bit. We'll hit the set back to DWL, so that's setting it back to its original DWL. And we're now going to do a set of uh, figures around our draft. So we'll do our final draft uh, will be 0 0.1 meters. Uh, we'll do a number of draft marks as eight, click OK and then it will change down so it's going to go and set the drafts to those different values and give us a set of values from those drafts so now we have it both against displacement and also draft uh, the usual scenario checking things like GM um, and also our drafts at forward perpendicular half perpendicular which are important so hit it back to set back to DWL and we will now do change our analysis mode to large angle stability and this is going to give us our GZ curve so we'll go to our section view so we can see the boat roll over I'll put the sections in so we've actually got something to look at and we'll start the analysis uh, we need to specify the uh, vessels displacement so for this we actually need to input a load case in to our uh, boat. So to do that we'll click the load case window 
we'll come across add a new load case keep it as load case one and we get this table and the light ship we're just going to put the light ship in as a mass um, as an estimate figure for this one but you can actually calculate it so I'll put 5.5 .5 kilos I'm going to change the longitudinal arm uh, because mine for some reason is coming at minus 72 meters um, but uh, we'll do that in a second we'll switch on our load case masses so that um, we can actually see where the load is I'll change that figure um, from our zero point we're measuring uh, forward from our, our zero point so we'll put in our longitudinal arm of 0 0.5 um, you can see there the light ship has come up uh, we will give it a vertical arm of 0 0.05 and you should see that the light ship and the center of gravity of the vessel goes up accordingly so that's with our load case masses uh, visible we'll go back to our um, section view and then we'll run the analysis and it will produce a GZ curve uh, on the graph down in the bottom right hand corner just make that a little bit bigger now mine starts at zero yours will most probably start at minus 30 um, this is because it is the parameters are set from minus 30 to plus 180 we can change that so it will start at zero um, and to do that you can change it in the heel angle setup so that might most probably for you says minus 100 minus 30 I've set it to zero um, once you've done your changes click OK and that's how you will get your GZ curve now another really really powerful one is the equilibrium and for the equilibrium what um, you in the load case you need to enter in as many of the different individual loads that you can now there is a slight problem here because the load the masses are so small that um, some of them the computer or the program puts as zero as the mass but the big ones definitely we try and put as many in there giving them a longitudinal a transverse and a vertical arm I'll just click to the profile view turn off the sections so that we can actually see um, the different loads going on so we've put the deck on I'm going to put it a bit higher than that so we'll put the vertical arm at uh, most probably 0 0.13 or 0 0.12 and there we go we've got we've actually placed the center of gravity of the deck um, because of course the deck's going to weigh something um, and estimations will be at a kilo now just those simple um, two loads we can run the analysis and you can automatically see that we get a, a trimming moment just because where the center of gravity of the vessel is and the center of gravity of the deck is um, so we're already trimming by the bow just because of the weight of the vessel itself now another powerful thing is, is that you can actually load in uh, preset uh, or you can fill the table out save the table um, and then load in the same load case to a whole bunch of different designs um, I'm going to add another load in just to show you how to do that again so I'm going to put the ballast or sorry the battery in um, I'm going to put a fictitious figure of 1.6 kilos I'm going to put it quite a long way forwards so at 0 0.8 give it a vertical center of gravity as well um, so it's just up off the uh, keel 0 0.02 maybe a little bit higher I think 0 0.04 looks about right run the analysis again and obviously with that bigger weight we end up with a large trimming moment to the bow um, and we've got a large moment of our center of gravity against our center of flotation so what I've done now is I've loaded in a complete set of uh, load case data and I can save that load case data as I would do by just going to save the load case data 
Um, and you can see I've put a, a large amount of other bits in there, stern tubes, receivers, shaft assemblies, electronic speed controllers, as much information as I possibly can. And I'm now going to put run the uh, run the uh, analysis, and you can see because of that I'm now trimming by the stern slightly. Um, but I haven't put a payload on, so I'm going to put the payload on. Um, I'm going to, just going to move the longitudinal arm a bit for the light ship because what I'm trying to do is balance the boat around its forces. The closer that I can get the center of gravity, the center of flotation, all of this together, um, as close as I can to each other, um, by moving the objects around the vessel and then running this analysis again, will mean that any force applied in the way of say a trim tab will have a better um, ability to keep the boat trim. If you've got a large distance between your center of uh, gravity and the center of buoyancy, obviously you've got moments working against each other. Um, and any force put on the in the water by the trim tabs will be first overcoming the moment force from the difference between the center of buoyancy and center of gravity. So I'm going to move a few things around and try and see what I can do, get it as close as possible. Um, we've got to remember that yes we might be able to get it as close as possible like I've just done there, almost on top of each other, but now it might be impractical to put those components there. Um, this is where the inventor is going to help you because you'll be able to then put those um, point those objects in the boat and see if they can actually fit. So lots of different things going on here, lots of different skills to make the uh, vessel as efficient as possible. So we can also see that it's still it's corrected our GM for the values given uh, the uh, light ship or sorry given the load case so you'll see a different value from the maybe the values uh, that are specified from modeler or stability as a displacement value this is an actual value so I'm now going to put a, a payload on and I'm going to put a payload on the deck uh, I'm just going to keep it as the payload no actual um, load itself and I'm going to give it a transverse arm so that uh, in the event that one side deploys um, if you're going both sides one side deploys but the other doesn't so this is a sort of worst case scenario um, put the payload on the edge run the um, analysis and the boat flips over so obviously we've got a bit of an issue there um, caused by the fact that we have only deployed one side um, so I'll click and reset reset to DWL and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the payload back in a little bit off the deck edge not by much um, I'll go with 1.30 uh, 1 yeah run the analysis again and now we can see by moving it 20 millimeters back in um, actually we the boat won't flip over um, we can see that we've our corrected GM with that on there is way way down at a very scary figure of 0 0.037 but it hasn't flipped over. So hopefully that uh, has helped you understand a bit more about MaxF stability and how you can use it to your advantage to give you better data to work with um, and where you're maybe designing your own boat. Uh, see how different loadings, different load case, cases may affect the overall performance and stability of your boat. If you've liked what you've uh, watched and it's worked for you, hit that like button and also add any comments for any future uh, content you want to see and I'll uh, try and put something together for you. Thank you very much for watching.